Some geologists now believe that at least three separate geographical pole shifts have occurred throughout the last years. However, if the effects of a cataclysmic event, such as those described in ancient records, are indeed contributing to the shifting of Earth, then another question arises, another missing piece to the puzzle. If the gaps in ancient technology and knowledge were a testament to ancient achievement, then remnants of such a vast civilization would exist, remnants that would exceed far beyond the ruins we've already discovered. But remnants are there. It's been hiding right under our noses. Off the coast of Cuba, India, Australia, Japan, nearly every continent, we're finding massive cities built by previous civilizations which we have no record of whatsoever. Some of these cities are up to 2,000 feet under the ocean surface and mostly intact as if they just sank into the ocean. Not the city themselves, but the entire landmass that the city was on just slowly sank into the ocean. Only now, in the last 20 years, in the later half of the 20th century and the first half of the 21st century, have we developed the technology to even discover these cities. And more are being discovered every year. Ancient underwater cities are not the only clues hiding in plain sight. As more pieces to the puzzle are revisited, they now seem to fall right into place. Since a geographical pole shift would most likely result in a permanent change in the axis of the Earth, the effects would also have immediate implications on global climate, causing new weather patterns and regional temperature changes. Places that were once desert might now be plush, or areas that were once abundant with vegetation and life may become a frozen wasteland. Areas like Antarctica. Recently, scientists have discovered huge petrified forests underneath the ice in Antarctica. These trees have grown as high as 80 feet and have leaves, which is indicative of warm climate trees. This, without a doubt, shows us that this region was once very warm and swarming with life indication that about 4,000 years ago, the South Pole and the North Pole moved. The North Pole, I believe, was in somewhere north of the state of Wisconsin, and the South Pole was out in the Pacific Ocean. And scientists know pretty much for a fact by direct measurement that the ice cap on Antarctica is no more than 4,000 years old. And in fact, Antarctica prior to that was occupied. It was actually had animals and, I believe, uh, human civilization. Uh, Siberia was a tropical climate 4,000 years ago with mammoths. If you saw the one they dug out of the Siberian tundra, this was a tropical animal that was quick frozen in the tundra with tropical plants frozen in its... Um, Dr. Agnew, there's evidence, scientific evidence, of prior pole shifts. Some of the evidence is geological. Uh, for instance, uh, along the Arctic Circle in Norway, or in Nordic regions, there's a lot of ancient volcanic activity. A lot of magma and lava came up out of the ground. Well, the thing about uh, lava or magma is when it, when it freezes or becomes solid, it assumes the magnetic alignment of the planet at that moment. And in that region of the country, there is a broad band of magnetic alignments for rocks that have never moved from their location, which indicates that at the moment that that lava came out of the ground and solidified, the planet was at a different alignment. Now, is that a magnetic pole shift or geographic pole shift? And what's the difference? Well, there are, you're right, there are two. For geographic, it actually uh, implies that the planet itself tilted during this volcanic eruption. 
and then as it tilted, each rock froze in a different magnetic alignment. A pole shift is where the actual magnetic field around the planet pulsates to a point where the north and south poles swap. Well, if it was a geographic pole shift, the alignment of the planet with the sun would change. The sun would come up in a different spot than it normally does. It would come up in the west instead of the east or the north instead of the south, related basically how we sit on, on the earth now. And that could change everything, weather patterns, migratory patterns, all kinds of biological blooming, everything could change on the planet. When these geographic pole shifts occur, they have catastrophic effects on the earth. Floods, earthquakes, tidal waves, um, shifting of continents. If the earth was pre-populated to the extent that you're talking about, whereas uh, every culture on earth has writings, ancient texts and writings regarding this event that you're describing, where is the evidence of these civilizations today? The cities. Do you know where 90% of the population of the United States lives? Within 20 miles of a coast. It would not take much of a tidal wave that struck all the coasts to eliminate 90% of the population of this country. It is the same in all countries that are close to the water. Uh, these cities are, are quite easily wiped off the face of the earth. And especially when we're talking about rims where tectonic plates come together, these can simply just fold in on themselves and those cities could be a thousand feet below the ground, 10,000 feet below the ground. Uh, in the ocean, there's evidence of whole continents just sinking beneath the sea. Is there evidence to suggest that anything like this can happen again? Of course there is. There is a lot going on in the universe that we cannot see, even with our orbiting telescopes. But we can feel the effects of it. We can feel gravitational effects, gravitational waves. We can feel dark energy and dark matter pulling on our solar system, pulling on our galaxy. December 21st, 2012 starts the age of Aquarius. It's well marked on all kinds of calendars, not the least of which is the uh, is the Mayan calendar, uh, the sunstone. A lot of the ancient writers believed that there would be some cataclysm that occurred at that time. Uh, many of us believe that it won't just occur on that day, that there will be precursor uh, events, an increase in volcanoes, an increase in earthquakes and their intensity, uh, fluctuations in the magnetic field around the Earth, uh, one of the things that occurred uh, last year in October was something that's never occurred before. We had nine X-class flares. We have a scale that we measure solar flares on. X is the highest. Nine flares in one month. The peculiar thing was sunspot activity was very low. The precursor events you're talking about, um, weather changes, earthquake fluctuations, uh, storm intensities, these all seem to be occurring at a much more frequently rate, frequent rate as each year passes. It's, it's unbelievable. The amount of storms and the amount of events that are happening every year seem to be escalating more than the year before. Let's say hypothetically something is coming this way. Let's say it's coming now and being very far away it has a very slight gravitational effect on Earth. And each year that it gets closer, the gravitational effect on Earth is slightly greater than the year before. And that is directly or indirect, indirectly causing the increase in frequency and the increased intensity of storms, earthquakes, all sorts of weather anomalies around the planet. If that's the case, would it not stand to reason that Earth is not alone? Because we have other planets in the solar system. This thing would just naturally, it's not picking on Earth, it would affect all the inner planets. And it does. Is it? Yes, all, several planets in the solar system are experiencing global warming as we speak. For instance, we've had a satellite going around Saturn now for 18 years. We've been making measurements of Saturn for 18 years. In those 18 years, the atmospheric pressure of Saturn has changed 30%. 
If that occurred on Earth, there'd be no life left.